Hello and welcome to Slightly Nostalgic, my name is Griff and we have watched Firefly episode 13, Heart of Gold. A bit of a weird episode, not my favorite, not my least favorite, it's a pretty good episode, but it's very western, it has a very a much more western theme than most of them, going almost back all the way to the pilot, how it, there was just a lot of horses, a lot of gunplay, very western, but this even more so. So this is the one where on this backwater moon, we've got the really rich guy trying to get his baby back from the brothel. One of the prostitutes at the brothel is pregnant with his child, and he's trying to get the baby, and Mal and the crew go in to protect the prostitutes. So, opening scene, pretty weird one. I think this is the only one in the show where it takes place in a place we're not familiar with and we don't have any characters we're familiar with at first. It's just these people in this weird situation and we don't know what's going on. Weird way to open the show. But then before the opening credits, we do cut to Mal and so it's like, okay, you're still watching Firefly, it's okay. But it's a funny moment where he's cleaning his guns, but he's like pretending to do heroic things because he thinks nobody's looking and then Inara scares him. <laughs> it's great. So something I wanted to point out is there are still prostitutes, like normal non-companion prostitutes in this universe and they're not considered respectable or classy at all. Like, it's just companions that are held in high regard by a lot of people. Still not everybody, but just your normal run-of-the-mill everyday prostitutes, still not respected by society at all. Except for maybe Jane, oddly enough, he actually seems to get kind of close to one of them and really isn't very disrespectful to them at all. Like, he enjoys their services and he treats them like people. Interesting that that I never really thought about that before But it, he has a funny moment where he is convinced to go help them at first Of course, he's totally against it because he's not gonna want to put his life in danger to help a bunch of strangers That have nothing to do with them and then all Mal has to say is they're whores and he's just like I'm in But it's interesting to see everybody else's reactions to the whole situation of being in a brothel Wash apparently not very comfortable with the idea of prostitution in general. Shepherd Book is of course really nervous around them being a preacher and all uh, and that's consistent with his behavior around Inara when he, they, he first met her and he was like not really sure how to interact with her. Kaylee is just using this as another opportunity to make it blatantly obvious that she wants to have sex with Simon and at this point like, she's not even trying to hide it from the other crew members. She's just out there just saying it. Why is Simon... What's going on with these two? How... What is Simon waiting for here? Like, come on, dude. Oh, but we do get an explanation that I forgot about for the overly Western theme of this episode. Uh, Nandy actually says that Rance has plenty of money to make it a more civilized, modernized place to live, but he intentionally keeps it this way because he likes to play cowboy, and she says he's turned the whole moon into a theme park. So, a lot of it is intentional. So anyway, after Mal sizes up the situation, sees what's going on and everything, he decides it's too dangerous and wants to pack it up with everybody and flee with the crew and all the prostitutes and everybody. He wants to just get him out of there, right? And then Nandy fights him on this and says, no, we're going to stay, which in my opinion is just really irresponsible. Like that's just a bad decision as a leader. You've got this guy here offering you safe passage to somewhere else, helping you escape this horrible situation you're in and you decide to risk the lives of everybody there just so you can like keep your house or whatever like i don't know it's played off as like this virtuous thing like this is my home i worked for this i'm not gonna abandon it but eh, logistically not a good decision to make speaking of irresponsible decisions i feel like zoe of all people had an opinion that i don't agree with here at all where she wants to have a baby it turns out there's a scene where she's fighting with wash about whether or not they should have a child and just realistically, that would be insane. You can't you can't be pregnant for nine months and then have a newborn child and then raise a child somehow with the lifestyle you guys lead. Like, people are getting shot constantly. You're always in danger of being thrown in jail. You can't you can't raise a kid in that environment, and that's basically what Wash says, but she's like, We can't wait forever. Just like, well just go 
get a job somewhere and live like normal people then if you want to have a baby come on and she's bringing this up now like right before this huge gunfight where they're expecting to all die horribly come on come on no this is not the time anyway we learned something interesting about Inara here that it's not a really big deal in the episode I hadn't I didn't really catch it ever before but Nandi is saying is acting like it's a pretty big surprise that Inara ever left the academy or whatever the companion headquarters and that everybody was really surprised that she left and then she was actually on track to become the leader of the place and like how she wanted that but then she just suddenly changed her mind and left and nobody knew why that's interesting it kind of supports my theory that she actually is dying and wants to see the galaxy and experience a lot of things before she dies because like suddenly finding out you have a terminal illness that could bring about that kind of rash decision right we get another funny moment with river being weird she still seems mostly lucid and coherent but she she just seems like a weird person now like she's not crazy and dangerous she's just just strange <laughs> like where uh, the woman is going into labor and she says, who do you think is in there? <laughs> Another funny moment is when Mal kisses Nandy and then he just stops for a minute and she's like, what's wrong? What are you doing? And he goes, oh, just waiting to see if I pass out. It's a long story. <laughs> it's funny and it also is logical. It makes sense that he would be uh, a little nervous about being seduced after all of the trauma he's been through with Saffron. And then of course when Inara finds out about Nandi and Mal, she goes and cries, like she acts really tough and together around Mal, like she doesn't care, whatever. And then she goes and we see her crying. Marina Baccarin, really good crier. That is some convincing crying. That's like, that's not like the pretty calm crying. That's like the ugly freaking out making weird noises kind of crying. It seemed really genuine, like, Good job there. I was hoping we'd get a really fun scene back on Serenity where Wash and Kaylee are outsmarting the bad guys that are on Serenity to get the jump on them, but we don't. Like, there's a moment where Wash is stuck in the engine room and, Kay and Kaylee is stuck at the front of the ship. I was hoping we'd get a cool scene of them trying to talk to each other over the radio to explain each other's jobs like while they're trying to do it. Like I wanted to see Kaylee trying to fly Serenity with instructions from Wash and then also trying to give instructions to Wash about how to run the engine and everything. That would have been great. What a missed opportunity, man. But there is a really funny shot that I have to point out. I never noticed this until I was watching it with somebody and they pointed it out. There's a scene where Rance goes and gets the baby and he's like backing up through a doorway and Nandy is there to confront him, and as he turns around, you can see in full view, the baby he's holding is a baby doll. It's a fake baby, just like a toy baby, just sitting there like, like obviously fake, and you just see it, the full face of it for a second, and then it cuts away, and when it cuts back to him, he's got a real baby, who is definitely not a newborn, Like, but that's pretty common for TV. It's just funny, it looks so ridiculous. But then bringing the mood way down from there, we get a very serious moment that I like uh, over Nandi's dead body. We've got Mal and Inara, and there's no dialogue in this scene. It's just Mal is, uh, like, they're both sad, and then Inara has this serious look, and Mal sees her, and it's like they agree. Like, she's telling him, go get Rance, go get him, and he's just like, yes, I will be the action hero, I will go do it. And there's no dialogue in the scene, but there's so much communication just with their faces. It's great. So, of course, Mal gets to be the action hero here that he was pretending to be at the beginning with all his gun poses, and he brings the guy to justice, brings them, brings him back, and the formerly pregnant prostitute lady gets to be the one to dispense the justice. She kills the guy in cold blood. He's a prisoner. She just murders him while holding his infant son. So cold, but so awesome. But then the episode ends with kind of a gut punch that I completely forgot about. Uh, there's a scene where it looks like Mal and Inara are going to confess they're whatever for each other, whatever they have going on that I still don't approve of and don't support at all. They would be a terrible couple. But anyway, it seems like it's finally going to happen. They're going to be honest about their feelings with each other. And then Inara actually says she's planning to leave. And I think it's pretty obvious based on 
her actions and the things that she says that she just feels like she is getting too attached to Mal. She was way too upset about Mal being with somebody else and she doesn't like that about herself and she doesn't want to get so attached to people probably because she's dying of something so she's planning to leave and it's a very sad moment for the episode to, to end on but that's all i got for this episode be sure and watch the last episode of the series very sad firefly episode 14 uh objects in space it's a weird it's it's a weird one a weird episode it's a weird title it's all very weird looking forward to talking about it so thank you so much for watching i will see you next time okay bye